We wanted to get to know Frida better, so we both took separate trips to Mexico, and we wanted to share our adventures with you. From the center of Mexico City, we took a wild cab ride to her home in Coyacan, about 30 miles south from the center. Her house is called Casa Azul, the blue house. It's U-shaped with a courtyard in the center, and you enter the living room through the courtyard in the back of the house, which is now a museum. Frida collected ex voto and retablo paintings, which are small paintings asking the Virgin of Guadalupe or a saint for help or healing. These paintings greatly influenced Frida's work. This is Frida's dining room. Notice all the hand-painted plates and bowls on the shelf? These were her everyday dishes. Famous people from around the world would visit the Blue House and join Diego and Frida at this table for dinner. Off of the dining room is Diego's room. Notice his hat and overalls on the hook? On the dresser are pre-Columbian statues which he collected. And here we can see his death mask. Off the dining room, in a lower level, is the kitchen. Along this wall, you will see Frida put their names on the wall, and the long counter you see is actually a wood-burning stove. There are holes for wood or charcoal, and Frida credited this style of cooking to great cuisine. Off the lower level kitchen are stairs both to the main home and all the way up to Frida's studio. Considering her physical challenges, it's amazing that she chooses to have her studio up this large staircase, but you'll see why in a minute. Here is Frida's studio. As you can tell, she loved to read and study. There is her large book collection on display. And here is the rest of her beautiful studio, flooded with natural light overlooking her beloved garden. Frida had a day bed in her studio. On that bed, her death mask is displayed. And right next to this room is Frida's full bedroom. In this urn are her ashes. It's a frog-shaped urn, which was her nickname for Diego, Frog, and it represents her being safe inside Diego forever. Outside her day bed, is this gorgeous staircase that leads to her garden. Here's an iconic picture with Diego and Frida on that staircase. It's a picture that me and my wife Olivia were able to recreate when we visited last year. The garden has an expansive patio. Diego created this pyramid for the garden to showcase his pre-Columbian statues. But there was little time to enjoy the garden as we needed to get to meetings and took a taxi and headed over to the Dolores Olmedo Museum, 30 minutes further south in Xochimilco. But not to worry, there are gorgeous gardens at the Olmedo as well. Here is a photo of the late Dolores Olmedo with her beloved Xolo Quintle dogs. And to this day, these are dogs that run in the gardens and live on the property. I had the honor to have lunch with Carlos Phillips who welcomed me to the museum and pointed out the peacocks on the property. He shared stories of his mother Dolores, her relationship with Diego, and their inspiration for this museum. This photo of Diego and Frida is in the very front of the museum and welcomes you to the exhibition. This is Adriana Jarmillo, the Director of Communications and our contact at the Olmedo, who has become a great resource and wonderful partner to us. Here we see the amazing portrait of Luther Burbank by Frida Kahlo. Xolo Quintle pre-Columbian spirit dogs led people through the afterlife in the Mayan civilization. Here I am standing in front of Frida Kahlo's portrait. It was actually the first time I was able to view it in person. It was an amazing experience knowing that soon this piece, along with others, would travel to our museum. And then here is my wife Olivia and I as we left the beautiful Dolores Almedo Museum. But that's not all. There's one more place to understand how Frida and Diego lived and worked, and that's at Diego and Frida's studio, about 20 minutes northwest of the Olmedo Museum in San Angel. Their iconic studio house is known for a bridge that connects a large building with Diego's studio in it, with a smaller blue building which held Frida's studio. 
This house was designed by a famous modern architect and had a large curved exterior staircase. As you can see, Diego's studio is large, and bright, and playful. And the windows allowed him to lower sections of his murals from the second story to be delivered throughout the world. These skeleton-like figures are called Judas dolls and are paper mache effigies of traitors. They would be designed with the likeness of politicians who they felt betrayed them, and they would strap firecrackers to them and light them off during the Easter season. This is Diego's bedroom. As you can see, it's very sparse with only a photo of Frida by his bed. Here is a photo of the infamous bridge that Frida crossed to go to Diego's side. And here I am crossing that bridge. Once over the bridge, Diego would walk down these narrow steps. And this is the view from those stairs. Here we see Frida's side of the house in her very simple bathroom. Perhaps this is what inspired this painting. This is the studio kitchen, which is far simpler than the Casa Azul, with only a small gas burner and sink. And here is Frida's studio at the San Angel home. Here's what it looked like while she was working. Above, we can see the painting Las Dos Fridas. The trips were so short, but there's always time for great food, seeing family and friends, and of course, making new friends.